Morning, folks. A little chilly yet this morning. Well, I tell you, I sure sleep a lot better now. Knowing that our onion little seedlings that we've been nurturing since February are protected. With a deer have moved in, they mowed down pigs' perennials that have been emerging. A little chive patch right here was mowed down, so I figured, well, if they're eating all our chives, they're going to sure eat these onions. But Yesterday I finished this second bed cap and it just makes gardening so much nicer knowing they're protected, knowing that we have a way to easily put some row cover over our plants if, if we need it for a little frost protection, insect protection, a little season extension. So we have two of them now. So I'm going to show you how we build them. Now this is the point where if I had one of those nice little intro things, you know, that people like to fast forward through, it would be playing right now, but I don't have one of those. So we'll just head up into the workshop. Yeah, as I said, the last wood that I used to build the actual frames for the raised beds were western red cedar. The decking that I'd rip lengthwise and, and then I could make a, an entire raised bed frame using three of those one by six cedar planks. But they've gotten so dang expensive, 25 bucks a piece. So what I've been using now for the bed caps are these pine planks that they say are rough sawn and this is a rough side on this side and this side is planed so they are a nice straight grain wood that rips very nicely and they're seven dollars and thirty some cents a piece you know really nice wood to work with which tells me probably won't be available all that much longer but again, they're not treated and they're not all that decay resistant. But I'm going to coat them with the solid stain and we'll get to that part. But, you know, it's your call. I've seen videos, folks that are building raised beds and they're saying, oh, it's a myth that treated lumber is toxic. It used to be when there was arsenic in it, but it's not anymore. Well, the industries claim that, but how many times have we been told something's not toxic only to learn later that there are these unintended consequences? And we truth is, nobody knows, really. But my concern is less with the toxicity of treated lumber in the raised bed in contact with the soil. This toxin, this poison, it's a pesticide and a fungicide, don't call it non-toxic. It's, it's designed to kill living organisms that are the decomposers, which is what we want living in our soil. But I am con less concerned about that material leaching into the soil and contaminating our crops than I am about using the stuff, of working it, milling it, the sawdust, the dust, the what do you do with with the big pile of sawdust under the table saw. You can't burn the stuff, you still can't burn it. If you can't burn something, that tells me there's some toxicity issues with that. Because burning concentrates this material and well, what do you do with your sawdust? I'd like to use my sawdust as, a, as an organic, uh, as a uh, carbon source. Organic material that goes into our garden beds that I use for mulch that I put in the composters. I don't want any toxic dust sawdust in there. And then how do you dispose of it? Can't really bury it, can't burn it. I just don't want to work with it. So that rant aside, we're going to cut some planks, rip them on the table saw and start on our frame. I'd like to start with cutting these two inch pieces. So I just measure 
from the rip fence to the center of the blade two inches. It's not terribly fussy. And then I also like to use a feather board just because I have one and it was only about 15 bucks but it is a very useful piece of equipment. It makes cutting a lot safer, a lot less wavering of the wood and it just it gives you another set of hands or fingers anyways. So we're going to cut two of these two inch pieces from this one leaving an inch and a half length that's going to be our vertical piece on the frame. And then on the next plank we're going to cut one two inch and then two of the inch and a half. That'll give us the six pieces of wood that we need to build our bed cap frame. Plug your ears. Doing it that way, so cutting the two two inch pieces and then having this strip remaining, which isn't quite an inch and a half, this is actually an inch and uh, three eighths. But that's all that's left over, so that'll be the vertical piece that the, uh, the hoops will attach to. And then for the second plank, I start by keeping the saw set at the two inch distance. So then we cut one more two inch wide piece. And then I reset the saw, reset the miter gauge. So to the inside of the tooth, the in, inside facing tooth to the edge of the, of the rip fence, it's an inch and three eighths. And then I rip two more of the narrower strips that will be the vertical parts. And what that gives us is this little half inch wide piece of wood that a person could use for something that uh, basically is, is the waste part. So with two planks, we get six eight foot lengths of wood that we're going to put together to make our frames. Next we come over to the miter saw and we're going to cut bevels on the ends of the two eight foot lengths and they'll be exactly tip to tip eight feet. And then I measure from the, the cut, the end that I cut from the peak of that, I measure eight feet and mark it at the end of this board and, and luckily they give you a little more than eight feet on these boards so that's kind of nice but I like to use a speed square to then mark where roughly where that line is going to be you know just as kind of a, a gauge for me to cut it and then with the third two inch piece, we're going to cut two four foot beveled pieces. So I cut the end 45 degree angle measured in four feet and I used my speed square made a 45 degree line here and I'm going to use the miter saw to cut that. So if you're making these bed caps, you likely already have the raised bed. So the top of the raised bed is a great work surface to assemble the frame for the bed cap. So the eight foot Piece. I'm going to put right on the outside edge here. Do the same on the other side. And then the four foot piece, of course, goes here. And the last one goes on the other end. So the other advantage to working on the cap of your raised bed is that if your raised bed is square, 
your bed cap's going to be square. If you've worked with me before, you know that I like to use this. This is Loctite, the PL Premium Construction Adhesive. And <laughs> this stuff, yeah, like I say, it's, it's, it's about like welding wood together. So I just like to put a bead of that on that miter joint. Just on one side, it's good enough. Get it set where it needs to be. And then I like to use a, an eighth inch bit just to drill a pilot hole. Pine's gonna split otherwise. And then insert in there, I just use a two inch deck screw. Just a Torx head. Two inch deck screw and I just put one screw into each miter corner and then we will install our our vertical pieces that will screw into the, the rails of this thing. So once all four of our mitered corners are glued and screwed together, then I cut these end rails at 47 and a quarter and they lap over the side rails which are 93 and three quarters. And so what I'll do is I'll run a I'll run a pencil line along and I'll drill pilot holes about every foot or so. Through there I'll remove the boards and then I will I will drill a pilot hole and, and glue and screw this joint together and then what I'll do is I'll I'll clamp these temporarily on so that I can lift this frame up and then from underneath I will put in all the screws which are inch and five eighths I believe deck screws and these rails are all set in from the outside edge about a half an inch all the way around. So I marked where those top rails go with a pencil on each side and then I drilled pilot holes in about an inch from the outside edge every foot or so and then I will clean all the all the little dust from drilling those holes off and then I'm going to put a bead of glue around that whole thing and then reattach those top rails uh, drill pilot holes in the edges and put the screws in and then I'll I'll temporarily clamp that so I can lift this thing up and then attach the screws from underneath. I got the ends attached. I drilled the pilot holes through that butt joint at the end that lapped the end piece over the side rails and put a, a screw after gluing that. And then I just threw a couple clamps to hold this rail on temporarily so I can flip this up and and I might need to re-drill pilot holes into the top rails to keep this wood from splitting. I flipped the frame over here to finish putting those screws in from the bottom. I could finish drilling pilot holes into those rails so I didn't split the wood. So we're just going to let that set here upside down and let that adhesive cure before we stain it. So the next step, once, once that's all stained, is to install the hoops. Now I got a bunch of them bent here. These are actually the old hoops that I rebent. They were the ones, the bigger ones, that went over the outsides of the raised beds. And I wanted these to fit kind of more inside. So this is my, one of my first benders I made. So we're gonna install three of these onto that frame. Well, anybody, I suppose you want to see how I bent these again. I need a little refresher. You know what? Maybe we'll even just well, build a whole new bender. Yeah, let's head into the workshop. 
This is the bender that I use to bend the, the hoops that are going on our bed caps. Now this one, I did a video on this, it's been a while, but this is a two foot wide piece of three quarter inch plywood that starts at four inches and in six inches up seven and three eighths, in six inches, which is the center of the board, up eight and a half, back to seven and three eighths, and then back down to four again. And then we just attach this piece of metal strapping. So let's go ahead and build a new one. So what I did is I cut this piece of three quarter inch plywood, 12 in, or 24 inches by, that's just under nine, eight and three quarters. So first thing we're going to do is just find the center. Of course, that's 12 inches. So we'll go 12, let's just make sure we're here. And then we're going to measure over six inches on each side. Remember, in the center here, we want to be up eight and a half, which is right to here. This is seven and three eighths, right to there, seven and three eighths, and then down on the ends here we're back to four inches. Now all I need to do is sweep that radius. If I had an assistant, I'm just using a yardstick here. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to snap. If I had an assistant, all I'd have to do is hold this on all of my marks, like right there, and have my assistant just run a pencil on the inside of that and I'd be done. But <laughs> alas, I'm doing it by myself. I'll figure something out here. I just took one of the little scrap pieces, actually one of the, the pieces cut off from my beveled corners of the bed cap frame, and I just spring clamped that just at the right distance above that four inch mark. And then I just pounded some panel nails, some finishing nails kind of thing there, and then they were set right at the inside edge of, of the marks. And then now all I need to do is sweep that without an assistant. Of course, I could have just laid my old one on top of my new one and used it as a template, but then you wouldn't have learned how to make this. So now we need to just cut that out. That can be cut out either on the saber saw or I think I'll use my band saw. Remember when cutting on a band saw, always try to cut on the outside of the line. Just on the outside because you can always bring it back down for the sander. Not that this is that fussy, of course. Yeah, that's, that's good enough. It's, you know, it's not a piece of furniture. It's made for bending some pipe. So it's good enough. So I think I'll write down, just for, to have it, what those dimensions are. Seven and three eighths, four inches, seven and three eighths. And then I like to write on the back when I start the bend. I'm going to use 8 foot, 1 half inch conduit. And I'm going to start the bend up 
18 inches. Now, I'll fill you in on that here in a little bit. Now, I just use this metal strapping because it's plenty strong for bending half inch or even three quarter inch conduit. It does pay though to you know pay the extra buck and buy the the heavier gauge stuff made in America rather than that flimsy Chinese stuff. It's just the right thing to do, and it's it's sturdier. So I cut a piece of this strapping that leaves six of the small holes, and that leaves five of the quarter inch holes in it, and then just take a piece of scrap half inch conduit and center that over that center quarter inch hole and do your best to kind of make it a, a fairly even Oop, that, so the holes line up. It won't be perfect, but just get it so that it's fairly decent. And then, I don't know, I always mount it on this side, maybe because I'm left-handed. I mount it on the left side of the, of the bender. But just take then that piece of scrap conduit and use that as a guide to get your height so that it slides freely in that there so now we're going to I'm just gonna clamp it on there once clamp it on there with the spring clamp and now we're going to drill a quarter inch hole hopefully through both of those holes That's a little tight. Let's see. Just so the just so the tubing goes through there, and then we're going to take this is a an inch and a half long carriage bolt. We use a carriage bolt because it has a, a flatter head. Because the back side of the bender is going to lay on a surface. He's like, put it off the camera so you can't even see what I'm doing. All right, now I don't know if I got that. That's good. Enough. And then I just throw a washer on there. And cinch that up with a just a bolt and good enough. And then we're going to just tighten draw that down so that head of that carriage bolt pulls through the strapping. The hole and into the wood so that when we, we mount this on our surface to bend our pipes that that's really not interfering much but now we have a strap that will hold our pipe since we want a three foot high bed cap three feet above the top of the raised bed we're going to lop two feet off this 10 foot conduit. Now, if the person wanted to have that extra foot of height, if you wanted a four foot high cage over your beds or hoops over your beds, then you keep it at 10 feet and start your bend at two feet. But we're lopping off two feet 
which is a kind of a shame, I guess. Yeah, you know, you're losing two feet of this nice conduit, but you always find some use for it. And then the nice thing is, at least it's recyclable. Unlike PVC, don't get me going on that. But we're gonna lop off two feet on this, so. Safety first, especially with these angle grinders, they are nothing to mess around with. We're gonna lop off Grind those burrs off. Okay. So now I set the bender up on this picnic table and I've never done this before. So I'm hoping that this will be sturdy enough and again of course if you had an assistant you could have that person help hold it steady but I'm going to mark 18 inches up on each end of this conduit because that's where we will start and end our bends. So if you've watched the other videos on bending tubing, we start our bend at that 18 inch mark and just like rowing a boat, you kind of like pull it towards you and then push it forward. And now I don't have a lot of table here to keep this straight because that's important to keep this all on the same plane so you don't end up with a corkscrew shaped hoop. No, that's not ideal. I missed the old trailer. Now again, if a person had an assistant, All right, now we're at the 18 inch mark on the other side. And so I'm going to bring it till that 18 inch mark just, or she can't see what I'm doing either. <laughs> that 18 inch mark here just kisses the end of the fender and then just tweak it past a little bit. So what you couldn't see very well is this was the part that went, was bent last and that's fairly straight. But this part that went into the bender first, I want to tweak that and bend that just a little bit more. So I'm gonna put the part that went through last in through first. And then I'm going to just, it's hard because the table does move. I'm going to just tweak this past just a bit. So the takeaway from that is to not put your bender on a 50 some year old redwood picnic table. Clamp it onto something more substantial than that or screw it into the deck of a trailer. Or, you know, I could have even clamped it just onto the top of one of my raised beds. I know they're not gonna move, but then you gotta work down at ground level. But I bent all of these. One, two, three, six, three, six, there are nine of them. Plus the three that I have on the bed cap I made, 9, 10, 11, 12. I bent all of those just clamping my bender onto the table saw. That was substantial enough. It worked fine. So, what do we have? Here's the last one we just bent. Matches well enough. Now the other nice thing about half inch conduit is it's sturdy enough, but it's also flexible enough. If there's a little twist or you need to kind of close it up a little bit or whatever, it's it's workable. So we'll get this, this frame that we just made 
we'll get this all stained up and then tomorrow we'll put the hoops on and put the mesh on and we'll have another bed cap. It's the next day and I'm putting a coat of a solid acrylic, a latex stain, deck stain, solid color. It's a cedar tone. This is a Pittsburgh Paints product, weather screen, water repellent deck stain. And I haven't used this particular product before. I've used gallons and gallons of solid color deck stain over the years, but I'm impressed with this stuff. It's, it was actually among the least expensive of the deck stains and it really covers well. You know, how long it holds up, I don't know. But, you know, again, this is not going on a deck. This is going on a, on a raised bed. So I'm just gonna goop it on there real good. I did the top, which is, I guess, the bottom part yesterday and then I just let it dry overnight and yeah I know the people that know all about painting are gonna say what's the dummy doing applying that in the full sun you're not supposed to do that well it's only 50 degrees I want it to dry fairly fast anyway so might not be the right way to do it but it's the way I'm doing it I'll finish this up and we're gonna hook the hoops onto it uh, the weather's starting to turn here. It, it almost looks like it could rain. So I'd like to get this thing done. I want to get my onions covered and uh, finish this thing up. So here's the hoop that we bent yesterday. So that's going to be the first one we install here. So I'm going to zoom in here and hope the camera doesn't blow over and show you how I do that. So what I did here on the corner and I started out by putting the bracket on the, on the sideboard and that didn't wasn't as sturdy. But I'm kind of uh, experimenting here a little bit because what I did with the prototype is I used this 11 16 spade bit. 11 16 is the perfect diameter to fit the outside of this half inch conduit. If you ever want to drill a hole and have that half inch conduit fit snugly into it, 11 16 bit is the one to use. So what I did with the prototype is I first drilled about a quarter inch deep socket, just a, a cup down at the bottom and then I pushed the conduit into that cup and then I put the bracket on. So that gave it two points so it wouldn't, it wouldn't flex. But I wanted to forego that for a couple of reasons. One is most of you probably aren't going to have an 11 16 bit. It's an odd size. They're not that expensive, three or four bucks, but if you don't have one, it's, it's, you should hate to buy one just for this. And the other reason is I thought, well, that, that cup there, it's probably going to pool water and, I don't know, it might start rotting a little sooner. It might be a little neurotic, but that was the other reason. And yeah, it just saves a step. And if you remember now that that mesh, that fencing once it's on there, that really firms it up. So, you know, I don't think it's going to break, but if you want to add that 11 16 cup step, feel free to do it. So these half inch sharp point lath screws work really handy for attaching all kinds of things. So I used those on these brackets. So I just measured and I found the center of our frame. I'm just gonna snug one up on each side. We don't wanna over tighten these. You know, we're just screwing into wood so we don't wanna strip them out so they're not really doing anything. We just snug it up. Now that's plenty sturdy without needing to have that, that sunk little socket down there using that spade bit. So by the time I drill a hole in here and put a, a one inch screw through, so again, I'll just use a nail set here and get about in the center of that bracket, that strap, and just, just tap a little, a little dent in there just makes it so it's not so frustrating trying to start a hole in a 
on a rounded surface. So I'm just using an eighth inch drill bit. Drill a pilot hole through the strap into the conduit. I don't have to drill through the back of the conduit because we're using a self-tapping screw. And these are the one inch self-tapping, you know, number eight, one inch self-tapping lath screws that are used for attaching lath to metal. So we're just gonna put one all the way through all the way through the strap, through both sides of the conduit, actually into the wood a little bit. So that's plenty strong. Again, we're going to use just one of these half brackets, which, you know, isn't quite as strong as a strap that goes across both sides, but working in this corner like this, I just get it as close to the corner as we can. And then just get one of those half inch lath screws. Just snug that up. Yeah, and it's, it's, you know, certainly not as strong as it would be if I had that socket drilled down there, but I think it's okay. So then again, they're gonna use the snail set. So I can start that eighth inch pilot hole, just an eighth inch drill bit. Yeah, they tell you in shop class, don't ever use power tools with a dangling string. I'll go ahead and drill all the way through the back of that conduit. and into the wood. And then I'll just grab one of these one inch self-tapping screws, go through the strap, through both ends of the conduit, and into the wood. Good enough. Let's get the mesh on there. I rolled out this four foot, two inch by four inch welded wire fencing. I rolled it out and I measured eight feet. And I verified, I just, I counted. Each of these is two inches, so I want eight feet. So half of 96 is 48. So it's 48 of these rectangles. And then I'm just using a, a side cutter on a needle nose pliers and I just, Nip those as close to the edge as, as I can get. Just all the way across. And then I'll cut another one exactly the same length. Now one end of our, our fence panel is gonna have these two inch little nubs left and we're just gonna go along and cut all of those off. Just up close to the to the horizontal piece there. We'll do that on both of these and yep, try not to lose any. Wouldn't be much fun stepping on those barefoot in the summer. I think I'll just leave this up on this old, this old self-watering planter. It's a kind of a nice work height. Better than crawling around on the ground. So the one nice thing about this fencing coming rolled up is it kind of wants to roll back up again. So it's, well, that's not a good sign with this. But 
that that, uh, that end hoop wants to move back and forth like that. I'm just going to hope that that this wiring is stiff enough that it'll it'll keep it in place. Now this is just that Chinese stuff, that 16 gauge made in China fencing. Now if a person wanted to be serious about this, you'd buy the American made stuff, the 12 and a half gauge fencing. I'll find out how much that costs. I, I don't know if it'll be that much more, but then I don't have to worry about my hoops moving with just one bracket on them quite so much without drilling that, that little socket in there. But we'll put it together and see what happens here. So what I use are just these 8 inch cable ties. You want the black ones, you want the ones that are UV protected. Probably couldn't even see me. Oh, I like to start at the end first and just kind of every foot or so attach a cable tie. So I've thrown a few cable ties on there. I can put some more on there. I haven't secured the bottoms yet at all, but now you can see that you now my fears of this thing that the hoops on the ends with the with the half bracket you know, moving. Once that wire mesh is on there, it really binds the thing together. But I wouldn't use anything lighter than 16 gauge. In fact, I'd, I'm going to check out that 12 gauge stuff. But I'll show you how we attach the bottoms and then we just need to put a two foot high panel on the ends to keep the critters out. So like I, like I said before in the last video, the, this half inch, these lath screws are made to hold lath, which is a mesh. They have a good wide head on them. And if you attach them close enough to the wire, they, they do a good job of holding that wire mesh down in place. So we'll put a few on this side and then I'll go over around on the other side. Pull it tight. So here on the other side then we'll just kind of pull it down so it's good and tight. And that really secures it. To close up these ends well enough, I cut two feet. So that's 12 of these two inch rectangles. And then we're going to cut off four inches off the end. So we'll lop off that, this last row here. And then these will just attach using cable ties and then using our half inch lath screws on the rail. And then as this starts to curve up, we can lop off, we can lop off here and then I just bend these around, just bend them around the conduit. So actually having this end panel attached to here and the side panels really firms this that end hoop up so it uh, probably isn't going to go anywhere so i'll attach these and put the hinges on and we're done so this is the last panel so i just kind of 
as I get towards the top, I just kind of nip off the side parts and then just kind of take these tails and just kind of wrap them around. You probably can't see anyways. Just wrap them around that fencing on the sides. And it makes for a good sturdy end there. And then I'll just do the same on the ends with my half inch lath screws. Just every foot or so, throw one in there. So I'm just starting in about 16 inches from the end. I think that's where I'll start these hinges. So I just picked up some cheap three inch these don't have a removable pin, which I would have preferred a removable pin, but that, that's what I have on the first one I made. So you can take the thing off, you know, in the fall and store it away. Again, with these two, you just have to take the screws out. So I'm going to set the hinge. I'm going to drill a pilot hole first. So 330 seconds, the drill bit I'm using. So, sturdy enough, but portable. Now here's a bed of onions that we planted last week, and I, I threw that first bed over them that I made, but that's the one that's going over the peas. So, sure sleep a lot better at night. No, no stinking deer can't get at these things. Yeah, just get the hinges on here and we're all done. Okay, so the same deal. Pilot holes, screws in. So, we're all set here. So these onions are protected from the marauders. And if I don't want to do any work on it, you just flip that thing up and work on it and put it back down. You want to put row cover on it, flip some row cover over it, season extension or insect protection. You want to put some shade cloth on or something like that. The mesh just makes it all that much easier. And we don't have to worry, it's plenty sturdy. So here's the first one I built. And here's the peas. Planted in gutters. For now. But that's for another video. So <laughs> What I thought were snowflakes, I think are, uh, I think the popple are flowering or something. There's little, little white things floating by. It scared me for a minute. Certainly not impossible. But we got her done. That was a long video. Next one might be about planting these peas. Unless I can come up with something else before that. So until next time, Mark again with Backwood Basics. Hey dear. Let's grow together. <laughs>